Welcome. We are going to test the Threadripper Pro 7965WX 24 core processor in some Blender rendering. I've had people asking lately if RAM is such a problem in 3D rendering, then why not just use CPUs? Um, so I was just going to kind of quickly run through some of these benchmarks and show you that even really high end CPUs are still a lot slower than even like midline GPUs. So we'll put some numbers to it here in just a minute. And obviously this is a 24 core processor. AMD has newer generations of thread rippers that go up to 96 cores and they clock higher than this one does. So we can do some simple math to kind of compare what our expected results with those would be for rendering. But we'll talk about um, kind of the numbers here in just a little bit. And then so, We'll start off with just running four Blender benchmarks that I normally run, and then we'll run the open data benchmark just so that we can compare that as well. A side note before we get started, I launched the Discord. We talk about all the tech stuff that we do here. We talk about 3D rendering and modeling and animation. So go check that out. The link is in the description, as well as the link to my uh, 3D art specific channel. So go check those out. But Let's get into the testing now. Okay, so we'll start off here with Blender Classroom. We're using the CUDA Cycles Render Engine with the CPU checked and no GPU. So let's just go ahead and start this one up. And you can already see that this takes a lot longer than some of the GPUs that I've tested recently. Also, just so you know, on the right side of the screen, I have task manager open so you can kind of see that all of the threads are in use. And I don't have a crazy overclock on this CPU right now. It runs all cores at about 4.85 gigahertz. So you can definitely push it a little more. This one's just a kind of a relatively quiet setup with the cooler that I have and um, pretty modest PBO tuning, Not, nothing crazy. So. We could push this a little more, but it won't really make a huge difference for this kind of work. And so we're about halfway done with Classroom. Obviously, this is already taking longer than most GPUs do now. So people say, well, what if you test the 96 core, um, the really high end CPUs, and we, we could find a way to do that. I don't have any myself, but what you'll notice as as the number of cores goes up, the price goes up in literally just an obscene way. I mean, I think those those newest 96 core thread rippers are pushing $12,000. So on a price to performance basis, CPUs are still kind of a really hard sell for rendering, but you do basically get unlimited RAM. So there's something to be said for it, um, but we'll compare the numbers to all these tests once we run them. So uh, the classroom just got done. It took a minute and 37 seconds. So I'm gonna go throw that into my spreadsheet and then I'll just run through these and we will kind of compare them once we have all of the other numbers collected. Okay, so the next scene is the barbershop scene. We have the same settings checked in the preferences as you can see. So for these other ones, these take longer. I'm just going to hit play and then we'll speed them up and we'll talk about them once they're done. Okay, so the barbershop scene got done in seven minutes and 12 seconds. The next scene is the really heavy one. This is the Lone Monk scene, running the 7965WX 24 core processor. Okay, the Lone Monk finally got done. It took 17 minutes and 15 seconds. Okay, and finally, we'll run the scan line scene. Same thing here, CUDA with the 24 core thread ripper. And I will just get it started. Okay, and finally, the scan line scene took four minutes and 19 seconds. So we'll go compare all of the render results 
after we run the open data benchmark. Okay, so let's run the Blender open data benchmark now. I'm going to run version 4.4, just like I have been recently. And we will select the processor here, not the GPU. So this is the Threadripper Pro 7965WX 24 core processor in the open data benchmark. And I'll click start and we'll just speed this up. Okay, there are the results. I'll go type those into the spreadsheet and we'll go back through everything. Okay, so now let's go through the results for the renders. We'll start with the classroom. And here you can see I have two lines highlighted. What I did was um, this kind of darker gold color is the actual result we got from this CPU test. So those are the ones that we just ran. And the yellow color up here is the kind of theoretical speed of the 96 core version from the 7000 series Threadrippers. Obviously, I don't have one. I didn't really test it, but it's basically um, four times as many cores at a very similar clock speed. And there's a lot of other components in the system that could make these results vary by a little bit, but it's kind of a good idea of where you might be at in just simple Blender rendering with a 96 core processor. So on each one of these results, I've highlighted both of those. And these are sorted for time to render the frame in smallest to largest. So let's just get into them. So on classroom, this CPU with 24 cores took 97 seconds. And as you can see, it's at the bottom of the list. And it's much, much slower than all of the GPUs that I've tested. It's even about 50% slower than the RX 6600 from AMD from a few years ago, which took just over a minute. So there's clearly, uh, there's a lot to be said for the speed of GPUs. Now, obviously, the RAM problem goes away with processors like this. This motherboard has eight slots for RAM, and I think it can technically run up to two or four terabytes of memory total. So you would you would be able to do away with worrying about RAM for rendering, but um, for these kind of prices, which is about 2,500 bucks for the 24 core version, or at least new, and uh, closer to $10,000 for the 96 core version, there's just no competing with the price to performance of the GPUs. And that's kind of why it's such a hard decision. And a lot of this stuff is because you really have to pick speed or memory. And that's true in just comparing GPUs as well. So uh, let's move on to Barbershop. In this one, you can see that the 7965WX is still near the bottom. It actually beats a couple of my other uh, GPU results, which is which is nice to see, but um, you know it it barely beats the RX 5600 XT, which is getting to be really really old now, and it's slower than a GTX 1660 Super, which is by today's standards uh, getting pretty old as well. And then all the way up here, our theoretical 96 core processor is somewhere between a 2080 Ti and an RTX 5060. So yes, same argument, you can get a lot of RAM, but the price is just kind of ridiculous for what you get. So for the heaviest scene here for the Lone Monk, this one is usually more interesting for GPUs, but not really a different story for the processor. This 24 core version is down at the bottom. It even loses to the GTX 1080 and a RTX 2060 mobile by quite a bit. And this one, this took a long time. This was uh, 17 minutes and 15 seconds. I mean, that's that's really, really slow. So if you're not if you're not needing hundreds of gigabytes of RAM for your renders, then these CPUs don't make sense just for this. Our theoretical 96 core version here is right around the RTX 4060 and 4060 Ti results that I have. So um, kind of similar. It's it's like a lower end to middle end GPU in speed, but it costs um, about 40 times as much money. 
And then finally here, the scan lands, exact same story. Our test took 259 seconds, which is slower than the RX 6600. Our theoretical 96 core version would be somewhere around an RTX 5060 again. And um, so really no, no big news there, kind of the same idea. Finally, for the open data benchmark results here, uh, we have the Threadripper Pro 7965WX at the bottom of the list. This one got 754 points, and the closest it gets is the Arc Pro B50, which I just tested a few days ago, um, and it's it's almost half as fast as that relatively affordable small professional card. So you can look through these numbers if you want to. You can pause it, go back and check them out. But really, the story here is the reason why you wouldn't want to use CPUs for frame rendering is because they just can't compete with GPUs in speed. This processor is great to have for 3D work in general because I can run simulations, I can deal with really massive models and scenes, and working in the viewport is not held back by this processor at all. So there are benefits to having this, this kind of machine in general, but for final frame rendering, this is not a good solution. Let me know what else you want to see. I'd like to say I'll get other CPUs to test, but I really only have just a few of them that I that I use frequently. Um, and I can test those if you want to see more tests, but uh, they're definitely too expensive to go build for benchmarking at this point. And again, go check out the Discord. If we get more people in there, there can be more discussions. And a lot of this information that people bring up in comments on YouTube can become a full discussion on there so that we don't lose track of the conversation and hopefully we can answer questions for people more. So go check that out. Otherwise, that's it for this one. I hope to see you on the next one and I really, really appreciate you being here to watch this.